Hello everybody, how you doing? This is just another Martian Monday. And uh, I, of course, am the Starving Martian. We are looking today at Mars Attacks the Transformers. Uh, last week we checked out Mars Attacks Popeye from IDW, published in January of um, 2013. And uh, so I figured we'd continue the trend and look at another one of the uh, crossovers put out that same month. So this is Mars Attacks Transformers. And um, it's a concept that on the surface actually seems to make more sense than Mars Attacks Popeye. After all, Transformers is already about an alien race um, invading Earth and bringing their war here. And so um, it does make sense. You know, we've already established that uh, there's aliens in the universe, so why not Martians as well? Um, this book is um, based off of uh, the G1 cartoon and comics that have come out since, which you can tell from the um, retro-style Optimus Prime and Megatron pictured on the cover here. This um, issue is apparently called Attack of the Bots, as it states on the bottom. Um, just like with uh, Mars Attacks Popeye, it's designed to look like um, a trading card here. And this would be card number 84. And that number is significant only because um, 1984 was the year that saw the introduction of Transformers. So um, we're going to dive right in. There's a lot to talk about here. Uh, this book has some extremely good dialogue. It's um, some of the best part about the book is the dialogue. In fact, it's got perhaps the single best piece of Martian dialogue in any Mars Attacks medium anywhere. Uh, I prefer it to ack, ack, ack even, and I love ack, ack, ack. But, uh, but let's dive in and see what this is all about, so. Alright. Cord out of my way, and here we go. Mars Attacks the Transformers. We begin with a shot of Optimus Prime slamming Megatron in the jaw. Uh, this artwork, by the way, is cartoony uh, in a good way. I, I do quite like it. It's not, you know, G1 accurate cartoon. I'm completely fine with that. I'm not, you know, slavishly beholden to everything G1. Um, but um, Megatron and Optimus are duking it out. And um, Optimus has the upper hand, knocks him to the ground and tells him... Uh, May have taken thousands of years and crossed several galaxies, but face it, Megatron, you lost. Or you lose, rather. And here's a great shot of the uh, victorious Autobots. Seems kind of a waste to have uh, Grimlock fighting Ravage, but whatever. And so um, the vanquished Decepticons are loaded onto these trailers. Apparently, um... Wheeljacks invented some stasis cuffs that should keep them there. And they're going to be shipped off to I don't know where, but off of Earth. This uh, general guy is pretty pleased about it, as generals would be. Winning wars and all is what they like. But he doesn't like um, Spike Witwicky's footwear here. <laughs> if you've ever seen the cartoon, Spike always wears these um, yellow boots. He says, uh, son, what on God's green earth are you wearing on your feet? What? Oh, I, I'm an oil rig worker. You see any oil rigs around here, kid? No, because there aren't any yellow boots. Think it through next time. So yes, he's quite the uh, fashion critic there. But before he could insult anybody else, he gets himself skeletalized. And I think we all know who's responsible. Yeah, it's Martians. Go figure, in a Mars Attacks book. Boy, the Matrix, Prime says. So here's the um, saucers coming down, and um, so the Autobots have no idea who these things are, what they are, uh, but um, as they say, they're hardly in a state for another battle. They just survived an intense uh, confrontation with the Decepticons, and now here comes the Martians. And we'll find out later in the book this was all planned by the Martians. They couldn't invade Earth while both uh, armies were active, but once one vanquished the other, they figured the time was right. Uh, Ironhide, of course, not intimidated at all by our Martian friends until they blow his arm off. Uh, 
All right, now here comes the uh, best line in the book, and again, my favorite line of Martian dialogue. We find out that the uh, Transformers can understand Martian. Uh, they, apparently their ability to adapt allows them to understand any new language. So they hear the Martians here, they're saying, Citizens of Earth, surrender now to the Martian rule. And uh, what they specifically say is, Surrender now, or we shall do unspeakable things to your faces and pets. <laughs> Which I think is great. Sounds exactly like the sort of thing a Martian would threaten. Unfortunately for everybody, um, the Martian attack frees the Decepticons. Megatron, seeing an opportunity uh, when it presents himself, asks to be taken to their leader, where he makes a deal with the Martians. Oh, by the way, this is the uh, Martian leader here. You'll see a little bit better panel later, but you could tell he's the leader because he's got this gold copper kind of uh, covering on the upper part of his um, spacesuit. But he says, you know, I, I, I figured it out, guys. You can't fight both armies at once. That's why you waited till now. But look, how about we just team up, join forces, we'll wipe out the Autobots together, and then we could rule Earth together. It'll be great. And uh, the Martian leader says, you know, that's a good idea. We could, we could use your help. And so the um, Autobots and the Decepticons once again come to blows. And can I just say how overused this Energy Axe and uh, Mace are? They were in, like, one episode of the cartoon. And uh, people keep sticking them all over the place. I'm actually tired of seeing them. That might be just me, but... But uh, as the Decepticons of the Autobots close in together to do battle, a green energy shield envelops them all. And we find out it was a Martian plot. The Decepticons have been outwitted. They just wanted to lure all the Transformers together so they could capture them and then go about conquering the Earth as they pleased. So um, Optimus convinces Megatron in a very nice bit of dialogue here that uh, they have to join forces. Megatron is very, very, very reluctant to do so. You realize, don't. If we are to escape this, just don't. We need to work together as a team. <laughs> so, reluctantly, they join forces. Blaster and Soundwave wire themselves together with this connecting bit. They don't know where they keep it. Um, I don't know what that does. Somehow it shatters the force field. Don't ask me how, but Blasters really seems to be into it. So Megatron comes storming out, seeking revenge. Um, there's the um, armor that the um, Martian leader had I was talking about. And uh, the Martian leader zaps him with the shrink ray. Now... If you guys remember my review of the um, Mars Attacks Martian Commander figure put out by Mezco, he comes with this rather odd-looking device. And in all the other reviews I watched on the guy, nobody could figure out what this was. This is a shrink ray from this book, and probably from other IDW books as well. I haven't read them all yet. But um, you can see he's holding it right there, identical to the weapon that comes with the Mezco figure. So now you know how he's supposed to hold it, like this. So, there you are, the more you know. So he shrinks Megatron, but is, um, you know, finds out that Megatron still has a fusion cannon, no matter how tiny he is, and it still packs quite a punch. Yeehaw, the destructive might of Megatron! Now the uh, Martians whip out their giant robots, and I, I don't like this design on the giant robots. I much prefer the ones used in uh, Mars Attacks Popeye. These guys look like giant spray paint cans, but whatever. Um, the UFOs and the uh, jet uh, fighter guys are duking it out. Astro Train teams up with Jazz there. I'm sorry, that's not Jazz, that's Prowl. What am I talking about? And meanwhile, treacherous Starscream seizes his opportunity. I've waited for this moment for so long, Megatron. 
Now, when you're finally defenseless, I'll crush you with one hand and take my rightful place as the leader of the Decepticons. And eh, Megatron's having none of that. And he just leaps on Starscream's face, sends him screaming, Get it off me! Get it off me! Um, if you happen to own a um, Masterpiece um, Starscream, which I do not because they're god-awful expensive, or a Cybertron Starscream, which I do, I got it a good deal, and a um, Legends-class Megatron, you could completely reenact this scene. Wait. See? Look at that. Ah! Get him off me! Get him off me! Yeah, I have too much time on my hands. So the uh, Martians whip out the giant bugs, as they do, but the Decepticons have giant bugs of their own, the Insecticons. Oh, and by the way, um, Soundwave mentions that he can reverse the shrink ray, so. You don't see that happen, but next time you see Megatron, he's tall again. The Martians get Spike cornered, but they don't realize they're in a pool of water with power lines dangling down, and they are all destroyed, except for Spike, who is wearing his rubber boots. So, he's all vindicated and stuff. In your face, General! Yeah, the first victim of the Martians. Let's just <laughs> uh, insult his memory. So it looks like the day's been saved. All uh, the Martian ground troops have been rooted and everybody's happy. Except that there's still some UFOs coming down. And they got Prime and Megatron in their sights. And uh, Hope is again seeming lost when one of the UFOs suddenly attacks them. Because that's no UFO. It's a... Uh, Robot in Disguise, specifically Cosmos, who was one of my favorite uh, Transformer toys as a kid, just because he did turn into a UFO. So he's been flying around with them, waiting for his opportunity to uh, sneak up behind them and take them out. And so Cosmos saves the day, much to Prime's surprise. I don't know if Prime assumes Cosmos is some kind of wimp or loser. <laughs> How did you manage? But, uh, but even Prowl here says, you know, I know, you know, I never real, really saw a point to his alt form until now. And then the uh, final interaction between Prime and Megatron here is classic. We've done it, Megatron. By working together, we've managed to drive back the invaders. This is a historic day in the history of our race. You're just going to go back to trying to kill us, aren't you? Absolutely. <laughs> the end and so that is Mars attacks the transformers now interestingly enough in the um japanese only cartoon transformers headmasters the decepticons blow up the planet mars um supposedly it's to um be able to collect the energon that gets um you know, uh, freed from exploding planets. But yeah, they completely destroy Mars, and I like to think there's a connection. <laughs> I like to think that they remember this incident and want to make sure that Martians never interrupt their plans again. But that's just my own personal headcanon going on here. So Mars Attacks Transformers, uh, my second favorite of the IDW crossover comics. Uh, my first being Popeye. You can uh, pick up a copy. Um, I would check your local comic shop if they don't have it well then um they're readily available online they don't generally cost too much but you might find you'll want to pick up the trade edition instead if you really want to read all of the idw crossover stories so that's how that goes um one word to the wise is it's got as well they all do some uh alternate covers showing other properties mars might have attacked but didn't so if you see Mars Attack Spike, that does not exist. It's just a cover. It'll have Transformers inside. All right, same with Mars Attack's uh, Strangers in Paradise. Th those are just covers, not full stories. So guys, this has been the Starving Martian taking a look at Mars Attack's the Transformers. We hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you next week with some more Martian Madness. Until then, keep watching the skies.